Hello, everyone. My name is Ashley and I'm a dietetic intern. So I'm all about food and nutrition. And I wanted to welcome you to the blood pressure self monitoring program nutrition education seminar. Today we'll be talking about the DASH diet, which is the dietary approaches to stopping hypertension. And hypertension is also known as high blood pressure. So this is just an overview of what we're going to be going over today. Um, we're going to be talking about nutrition and blood pressure facts, um, what the DASH diet actually is, <clears throat> and then we're going to go over a day's worth of meals um, that correspond with the DASH diet. And then we're going to go over um, how we can make some tweaks um, to some meals to make them more DASH diet and sodium friendly. And then we're going to talk about um, why following the DASH diet works and helps to lower blood pressure. So during this seminar, we will find out what is and isn't true about nutrition and blood pressure. So we know that food has a significant effect on blood pressure. Sodium saturated and trans fats and added sugars can all um, increase your blood pressure. Eating a variety of fruits and vegetables, whole grains, lean protein, nuts and seeds can help control your blood pressure. And then we have calorie intake um, that should be balanced. Um, this is the in versus out mechanism, where in refers to the amount of calories that are eaten and out refers to the calories that are burned, uh, both through metabolic activity, like keeping your heart pumping and your brain working, and then also through physical activity. Then we also know that weight impacts blood pressure. Um, weight gain can actually increase your blood pressure. And then we have the opposite where weight loss can actually help reduce blood pressure. So let's talk about how the DASH diet came about. The DASH diet has become well established as a model healthy eating plan. Um, the study that's pictured on this slide was supported by the National Heart, Lung and Blood Institute. So we have the control diet, which is the typical American westernized diet. And then we have the fruits and vegetables diet, which was the original DASH diet, um, which did not include a sodium restriction, but did include eating fruits and vegetables and increasing fiber and foods that are naturally low in sodium. The combination diet is the current DASH diet, and this includes the healthier eating pattern um, that I just mentioned, which incorporates fruits and vegetables, um, more fiber, and it also has a recommendation to reduce your sodium to 1500 milligrams. So the foods at the core of the DASH diet are naturally low in sodium, so just by following the DASH way of eating, you're likely to reduce your overall sodium intake. You can also reduce your sodium further by using sodium-free spices or flavorings with your food instead of salt. Um, not adding salt when you're cooking rice, pasta, or hot cereal. You can also rinse your canned foods to remove some of the sodium that's used as a preservative. Um, and you can also buy foods that are labeled no salt added, sodium-free, low sodium, or very low sodium. Um, nowadays, there are a lot more options and brands that um, are including low sodium versions, um, especially with um, like your canned foods and your canned tomatoes and especially your pasta sauce. There are a lot more brands that incorporate low sodium options. Um, I also did want to talk about um, some seasonings. There is a seasoning called Mrs. Dash. Um, these seasonings have no affiliation with the DASH diet, even though the name is similar. However, um, they do not contain any salt. So using um, this brand of seasoning can be a good way to season your food and add more flavor without adding that extra salt. So going back to the slide with the graph, um, as you can see, those who follow the combination diet, which is um, the diet that has that sodium restriction, um, had overall better results in terms of lowering their blood pressure. So now we're gonna talk about the specifics of the DASH way of eating. 
Um, so the DASH diet, which is the dietary approaches to stop hypertension is based on research um, that was sponsored by the National Heart, Lung and Blood Institute. Um, it reduces the risk of developing cardiovascular disease um, by lowering high blood pressure and improving blood lipid levels. So the lipids that I just mentioned are fats in the bloodstream that are also known as cholesterol and triglycerides. So this diet does a really good job of kind of reducing um, your LDL cholesterol, which is the bad cholesterol, and improving the HDL cholesterol, which is considered the good cholesterol. This diet also emphasizes vegetables and fruits um, and also emphasizes fat-free or low-fat dairy. It also includes whole grains, um, such as like whole grain bread, brown rice, um, beans, nuts, seeds, and the unsaturated vegetable oils. It also recommends limiting your sodium, limiting your sweets and sugary beverages, and also reducing your red meat intake, um, because red meat does have that saturated fat in it that we don't um, really recommend. So if the DASH diet is followed, it's possible to see results pretty quickly. Following the DASH diet can reduce your blood pressure by a few points in as little as two weeks. And then over time, it can make a significant difference in your health risks. So this is just a, a simple breakdown of the DASH way of eating and what it emphasizes. Um, so it does emphasize increasing your fruits and vegetables. Um, when you're eating grains, you want them to be the whole grains or the whole wheat grains. In terms of your protein, um, we lean, uh, lean towards more lean meat like poultry and fish, and we want to decrease that red meat consumption, as I said, because of its saturated fat content. And then we also want to increase your nuts, seeds, and beans. Um, dairy, we emphasize low fat or fat free or skim. And then the oils, we recommend vegetable oils because those are going to be your unsaturated um, sources of fat. And then sweets, we want to decrease um, the added sugar. And then vitamins and minerals, this diet does a really good job because you're eating more fruits and vegetables. Um, you're going to be getting more vitamins and minerals such as potassium, magnesium, and calcium. And then with that, um, you're going to decrease your sodium intake. So then this slide shows a breakdown of a daily and weekly food group servings based on a 2000 calorie diet. Um, some people may eat more than 2000 calories and some people may eat less than 2000 calories. So these servings um, can change a little bit based on your calorie intake. Um, but just as an average for greens, we wanna see six to eight daily servings. And some examples of that could be a slice of bread um, so if you're eating a sandwich um, with your two pieces of bread, that would be two servings. Um, and then another example could be a cup of ready to eat cereal or half a cup of cooked rice, pasta or cereal. And then in terms of your meat, your poultry and your fish, we wanna have six or less daily servings. So an example of that could be um, three ounces of a cooked piece of meat. Um, so vegetables, we want to have four to five servings per day. Um, that can include one cup of raw leafy vegetables, like a salad, or half a cup of cooked vegetables, or six ounces of vegetable juice, such as V8. And then fruits, we want to have four to five servings per day as well. Um, that can include one medium fruit as a serving, which could be like an apple, an orange, or a pear. Um, a quarter cup of dried fruit um, could include like craisins or those dried banana chips, dried apricots. Um, or you could do a half a cup of fresh frozen or canned food, fruit. I just want to emphasize with the canned fruit, we want to look for the fruits that are in 100% juice and not so much the fruits that are in a syrup as that's going to add um, a lot of added sugar. Same thing with the six ounces of fruit juice, that could be a serving. Um, we wanna do 100% fruit juice and kind of stay away from that juice cocktail because that's gonna add a lot of added sugar as well. So then our low fat and fat-free dairy, we want about two to three servings per day. An example of a serving could be eight ounces of milk, 
um, one cup of yogurt or one and a half ounces of cheese. And then fats and oils, um, about two to three servings per day. Some examples of those could be a tablespoon of low fat mayonnaise, um, two tablespoons of salad dressing, or a teaspoon of vegetable oil. Now the vegetable oil, um, if you cook with vegetable oil, like you put some in your pan and you're sauteing your vegetables or cooking your meats in it, that can count as your serving of vegetable oil. So then sodium, the 2300 milligrams was kind of the old um, DASH diet. So, um, but that is still lower than what a typical person might have um, for sodium for the day. Um, but if you really want to lower your blood pressure even further, we do recommend the 1500 milligrams, which as we saw in the study that I showed you, um, is really more beneficial in lowering your blood pressure. So then our weekly servings, we have nuts, seeds, dry beans, and uh, peas. We want to have about four to five servings per week, um, which could be just one serving per day. Um, an example of those servings could be half or one and a half ounces of nuts, um, a tablespoon or, or a half ounce of seeds, or half a cup of cooked um, dry beans. And those dry beans are the ones that come in the bag um, versus the beans that come in a can. And then we have our sweets. We want to limit those to about five or less per week. Um, an example of a serving size could be a tablespoon of sugar, a tablespoon of jelly or jam, um, a half ounce of jelly beans, or um, a cup of lemonade. So who could benefit from following the DASH diet? So people who are at risk for heart disease could benefit from following the DASH diet. Um, so let's take a look at some of the risk factors that may put someone at risk for developing heart disease. So people who have high blood pressure, um, high cholesterol, uh, people who have diabetes, chronic kidney disease, if you smoke, um, being overweight, um, lack of physical exercise, um, if you're African American or if you're over the age of 51. These all put you at a higher risk for heart disease. Um, I do wanna point out that the risk factors that are in red are the ones um, that we can control. So our blood pressure, our cholesterol, um, whether our diabetes is under control, um, monitoring our kidney disease, stopping smoking, um, being a little more active, which can also in turn help us lose some weight. So those are all the things that um, we can change and kind of decrease our risk for developing heart disease. So let's look at one day's worth of meals using the DASH diet, um, and which includes a variety of foods. Um, so on the left, we have the DASH diet that has um, kind of a more liberal sodium restriction. And then on the right, we have some ways that these meals can have a lower salt content down to the recommended 1500 milligrams. So for breakfast, we have three quarters cup of bran flakes, a medium banana, a cup of low fat milk, um, some toast. We have some margarine and a cup of orange juice. So already this is kind of, this is a very hearty meal. So some ways that we can reduce the salt content even further is switching the bran flakes to three cups of shredded wheat cereal. And then we can also switch the margarine to an unsalted version of margarine. So for lunch, we have three quarters cup of chicken salad, um, two slices of toast or bread, um, a tablespoon of Dijon, um, salad with a bunch of vegetables and some Italian dressing, and then we have half a cup of um, a fruit salad. So ways we can lower the sodium content of this meal even further is if we um, remove the salt when we're creating the chicken salad, and then also um, we can change the Dijon mustard to a regular mustard because Dijon mustard has a little bit higher of a sodium content than the regular yellow mustard. So then for dinner, we have three ounces of beef with some gravy. Um, we've got some green beans, 
um, a baked potato with some sour cream um, with some scallions and cheddar cheese on top. Then we have a whole wheat roll with some margarine, a small apple and a cup of some low fat milk. So a couple ways that we can reduce the sodium content in this meal is if we use um, a reduced fat or a low sodium cheddar cheese. Um, certain cheeses um, naturally just have a lot of salt in them. So using a lower fat or a lower sodium version um, can be helpful. And then again, um, switching out the regular margarine with an unsalted version. Then for a snack, we can have a third a cup of uh, um, unsalted almonds, um, a quarter cup of raisins with half a cup of fruit yogurt um, that's fat free or no sugar added. Um, there isn't really any changes that can, that should be made to this snack. It's pretty um, low in sodium already, so that's good. Um, so just something to think about um, on what are some ways that you can personally incorporate some DASH eating habits into your own diet based on what you already are eating every day and based on what we've already talked about. So now we're gonna look at some sample meals and we're gonna go through and see um, which ones are the healthier options and then what are some ways that we can improve um, the meal that's not so healthy. So for breakfast, we have a three egg omelet with spinach, tomatoes, feta cheese, an English muffin and a cup of orange juice. And our other option is a fat-free yogurt with strawberries, blueberries, sliced bananas, oats and almonds um, with some water. So out of those two options, which one do we think is more um, DASH diet compliant and has a lower sodium content and fits into the recommendations that the DASH diet makes? So the healthier version would be the fat-free yogurt with the strawberries, blueberries, bananas, and a bunch of fruit in there with some oats and almonds um, that are really healthy for you. So let's go through lunch. We have spinach and whole grain pasta salad with chicken, walnuts, avocados, tomatoes, and reduced fat goat cheese with a cup of water. And our second option is tomato mozzarella and basil sandwich on ciabatta bread with a glass of water. So out of those two options, which one do we think um, is more DASH compliant and the healthier version? So the healthier version is gonna be the spinach and whole grain pasta salad with chicken, walnuts, a lot of healthy fats um, in that meal along with the reduced fat goat cheese. Um, we have the whole grain pasta with um, some spinach and avocados, some vegetables in there um, and some walnuts as well. So then at dinner, we have teriyaki beef and vegetable stir fry with white rice and a glass of water or we have salmon with broccoli and brown rice with a cup of skim milk. So out of those two options, which one do we think would be more DASH compliant and a little bit healthier? So it's gonna be the salmon and broccoli with the brown rice and a cup of skim milk. So we have the whole grains in there with the brown rice and the low fat um, dairy with the skim milk. And then we have vegetables and um, healthy fats from the salmon um, that are also lower in fat um, than like red meat or something. So then out of the options that we didn't choose, how can we make those a little healthier and fit more into the DASH diet guidelines? So for breakfast with the three egg omelet um, with the spinach and tomatoes, what we can do is we can do a one egg omelet with spinach, tomatoes, reduced fat cheese instead of the feta cheese, and whole wheat toast, or we, you could do a whole wheat English muffin um, with a cup of water instead of orange juice. For lunch, um, to kind of tweak the tomato mozzarella and basil sandwich, what we can do is we can keep the tomato, use a reduced fat mozzarella, um, keep the basil and put the sandwich on whole wheat bread instead of the ciabatta bed, bread with some water. And then for dinner with that stir fry, we can switch out the beef um, for some chicken. You can definitely keep the vegetables um, and use a low sodium soy sauce. 
What we recommend is a soy sauce that has less than 300 milligrams of sodium per tablespoon. Um, or another idea could be making a low sodium homemade sesame ginger sauce and then switching out the white rice with brown rice and um, we could add in a cup of low fat or skim milk. So why does following the DASH diet work? Because the DASH diet is a healthy way of eating in general, it offers benefits besides just lowering your blood pressure. It can help prevent a variety of chronic diseases. So it promotes a wholesome and healthy lifestyle with well-balanced meals and follows um, the dietary guidelines that we recommend. It also helps to regulate and reduce blood pressure and it increases your potassium, calcium, magnesium, fiber, and adds a little bit more protein. And it also reduces your sodium, um, your added sugars, and the saturated and, and trans fats that we do want to try to stay away from. Um, it also, while it's not a weight loss program, it can steer you towards a healthier diet and help you naturally lose some unwanted pounds. So it promotes healthy weight loss um, or maintenance and replaces empty calorie foods with foods that are more nutrient dense and a lot healthier for you. Um, so normally if we were in person, um, we'd break into groups and have a discussion, but since we're over Zoom, I kind of just wanna um, pose some questions for you to um, just think about on your own time. So after having discussed the DASH diet and thinking about what you've already eaten today, um, what foods have you eaten today that would be DASH friendly? And how could you make your food choices more similar to the DASH approach to eating? Think about the kinds of DASH foods that you can purchase at the grocery store or at a restaurant or convenience store. Um, what are some of the foods that you might be tempted to buy and why? Um, what kinds of foods can you buy on a budget that would contribute to a DASH approach to eating? And when you have a busy day and are constantly on the go, like many of us, what kinds of foods do you tend to eat? How are they prepared? How might food preparation come into play when following the DASH diet? Um, so some things I do recommend. I know sometimes it is kind of expensive to buy fresh fruits and vegetables. Um, so another option would be buying the frozen version. Um, they are a little bit cheaper and they do have the same um, nutrient content and the same benefits that the fresh fruits and vegetables have. Um, so those can just be a little more of an affordable option. Um, some other things that you can do is with the canned foods, like I mentioned before, um, you can rinse those off um, before you eat them to kind of get rid of some of that sodium. Um, the canned foods uh, might be a little bit cheaper as well. Um, and then um, the more convenient foods like the frozen meals, there are a lot more options in terms of sodium content and buying low sodium versions of those foods. Um, I don't really recommend the frozen meals, but I know a lot of us are busy and we might not have time to make this extravagant dinner. Um, so just kind of looking at the nutrition label and finding um, the meals that are lower in sodium can be helpful and are more convenient. Another idea could be meal prepping, um, especially if like you bring um, your lunch to work. Um, you could make a large meal one night and put them in containers and kind of make your own like grab and go system and, and meal prep for the week. Um, that way, it's more, it's a more convenient way to make your lunch and um, bring it to work that way. So we've talked about the DASH way of eating and the benefits it can have in helping lower your blood pressure and your risk for heart disease. Um, so now we're going to take a look at how adding or increasing physical activity can also help. So evidence has shown that regular physical activity can lead to a significant reduction in blood pressure and improve um, other cardiovascular risks. Moderate physical activity has also been proven to decrease blood pressure in um, those with, with high blood pressure um, who are less responsive to medical treatment, um, such as medications. So 30 minutes of physical activity a day, which um, 
equivalent to brisk walking or speed walking um, six to seven days a week, which would total 180 minutes per week, um, can result in better management or reduction of one's blood pressure. So the physical activity doesn't need to be um, strenuous, strenuous or extreme, um, just going for a brisk walk um, around the neighborhood or something on a treadmill um, six to seven days a week for only a half an hour can make a significant impact. So these are just some resources that kind of support um, what we were talking about with physical activity and how it can lower blood pressure. Um, this is just a list of some studies, um, but it's definitely not limited to just these studies. Um, so that's all I have. Um, so I just wanted to say thank you for taking the time to listen and I hope you learned something. Um, and I do want to remind you to self-monitor and track your blood pressure at home and attend the office hours. Um, connect with your Healthy Heart Ambassador to practice self-measuring and ask any questions you have. Um, I am also available to answer any questions that you may have. Um, please, please feel free to email me with any concerns or any questions that you might have. My email is at the bottom of this slide. Um, so thank you again for watching and participating in the program.